Good morning. I'm Jackie from Caddy Jack's Knits. And this is a short video about the Weekender. And today I'm going to talk all about Weekenders. And I discovered this morning that when I stacked them up that I had a week's worth of Weekenders. And I really wanted to talk about what I did to five years ago with my first one to come to this one that I just finished last week. Um, so uh, it's all weekenders. It's all me this time. But Caitlin and I are both so excited that you've been knitting along with us. And we look forward to seeing your weekenders over on the Lamb and Kid Ravelry group project page. The original weekender, if you can see, it's a quite boxy item and it has a very wide, this pattern is by Drea Rain, Renee Knits on Ravelry or Andrea Mowry and it was originally knit in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. Uh, a very oversized sweater with a split hem with this, this is the, I, say, I would say the iconic detail right here is this seam and um, reverse stockinette and then stockinette sleeves, a little bit of ribbing. This is where I learned how to do short rows and I learned how to do a Kitchener bind off, etc. And it's just so easy to throw on in a basic color. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons it, I don't wear it as much is because this is my bra, which shows so I have to kind of just shove it to the side. Um, you can wear it with a little bow if you want. And it, of course, is fabulous with jeans. I have plaid pants on. I don't think I can get far enough back. Let me try to get a little further back. Let's see if you can see. Not really. Okay, but you get the idea. This shape is fabulous. This, there's no... Re there's no question why it's such a beloved sweater. I did, I was a very experienced knitter, um, but I hadn't knit for like a decade. And when I came back to this, I fell in love with Andrea Mowry, wanted to, you know, like all of us kind of be Andrea Mowry for a moment. And I knit exactly what she knit. And that's my first weekend. And she also showed it exactly like this, more Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and she didn't put sleeves on it, and I did the exact same thing. Again, this is newsprint, iconic marled um, detail, which, you know, makes it very uh, uh, classic. However, I would say again, I didn't wear this very much because of the super wide neck. Like where it belted, put a little hat on, it would feel kind of amazing that way. Um, but all I still didn't wear it very often because of this super wide neckline. I would wear it with shirts, but you can see it goes past for me, past even this indent on my, and so then I had to, it was what t-shirt I was wearing. The thing I like to wear under these is stripes. I'll show you that. Like, you can see how, even if the neckline's a little big, you throw on a shrug and you're happy as can be, and you have stripes, and it's just very playful with jeans or whatever. It's such a good, basic, sweatshirty um, knit. So I loved it, but of course, as you know, we wanted to do something else. We wanted to explore this knit with different fibers besides Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. So I believe it was two summers ago I worked out making a linen one and it was a different gauge so I had to I wanted to make it a little narrower a little more cropped and a little longer in the back so those were some of my modifications it's so fun with a tank and big baggy jeans like just super oversized because this fabric is thinner than shelter it just gives a completely different slouchy summery vibe um, and it's great uh, you're seeing it here over a dress although there's no nipping in anywhere so 
It's just all about big and oversized. We'll say again though, uh, this whole, like if I really look at this, this is what I never, this was never really me. So that's where we leave off. That's where we get caught up. Those were five years ago, maybe two years ago, and then we'll be caught up to today. And here we have the Big Birdie Weekender and the Three Day Weekender Cow. This is in the Diamond Lanes, Big Birdie. And this was our first thought this summer, Caitlin and I, when we got this yarn, we wanted to do something special with it. And we thought, let's address the Weekender. It's such a fabulous sweater. We've both made them before, but we want to take what we knew about the Weekender and modify it. And each of us thought about things that we wanted to change in our Weekenders. So for me, I did some things similarly. Let's see, you can see it has the big, and, and this one has been on Instagram where there's long pictures of it. I can't get my face and my bottom on one. So we're just gonna look at the top for now. Um, it has the long hem, the long, you know, different length hems. It's in birdie, it is a different, different gauge than the original pattern so we were playing with gauge but the big change for me was adding this neckline and uh and where that came about and this is something i want to show this you is next. the ready to wear j crew cashmere turtleneck i take on every trip i go on it's so like it's just something even if it's summer i bring it along just as sort of self-defense from ever being cold and this was how I modeled the turtleneck. You can see it's the same. And I know I wear this all the time. And the thought is making something I'd wear all the time. And the, the color I chose because it was something that was easy for me to wear. This meow is gorgeous. It's kind of a, you know, it's, it's got these warm golden yellows underneath a real nice caramel color. And the sleeves were for fun. These little bands of color here, adding a little fun. So um, this was the first modification. And so far, all of these sweaters have been reversible. Um, the short rows for the Weekender are up in the shoulder shaping. And there are not short rows in the back. It's just different um, lengths based on how long you do that ribbed hem. So this is a color blocked weekender. Uh, I added some ribbing just to transition. I added the color in a, in a row of stockinette and then the ribbing just so that we wouldn't see um, all the pearl bumps going through. Excuse me, all of the um, birdie fluff is in my nose right now. Mm. Anyways, and I did the collar again. The thing I did significantly differently is I left one side open and added ties. So you can see those. There's, this is closed, that's open. But you can see that I would have probably benefited from some short rows um, in the back. And so I picked that up in my next design. This starts with stockinette and goes to ribbing. Uh, still has the big collar. I sized down um, from the Miel, the first one, I sized down a little bit. And when I was doing this, I was thinking, gosh, I want to size down even more. This fabric is so next to skin soft and I want to have it even cozier. So another weekender I made, I based off of this ready to wear sweater right here. This was one that was my grandmother's and you can see similarly to what we did before it has I noticed in the ready to wear that the turtleneck gets wider so that when you fold it down there's a spaciousness rather than a tightening and I did my gauge my width off of this sweater I laid it down you can see and used this as the model and this neck can be up or down. I made the neck a little shorter on this one. 
but I also looked at the body. You can see it ends right here. So it's much more closer fitting. I added short rows at the back so that it wouldn't ri you know, rise up like that. And I kept the sleeves narrow. This one, of course, is amazing with jeans. This is frog rock, and this is the smaller fit, which I think ultimately this is way more me than that really wide fit. I just really appreciate this in the frog rock. And the main thing that unlocks it is just understanding gauge, you know, knowing your gauge, making a swatch, because it's such a simple boxy sweater. Uh, I did have to change the short rows in here. Um, and I put those details on my project page and I added short rows back here. But otherwise, you know, in general, this is sort of like the spirit of the weekender, but it's been, um, what is this one? My sixth one and I'm getting to what I like about it and how I like my casual knits to fit. This one, it does still fit um, a shirt underneath, but not as well as the other ones. This is more like a wear alone, which leads me to the final week. Again, weekend. in my wardrobe, in my ready to wear wardrobe, there are basic pieces like this is a merino turtleneck from uh, J. Crew, skinny little turtleneck. And I wear it all the time. You know, I just wear it with jeans and trainers and I love it. So my last iteration, I was thinking I was going to be making a turtleneck based on one of these small little fitted merino turtlenecks. But, and I also love Adidas and so I put some stripes in. I was thinking, you know, letterman jacket, big sleeves, patches everywhere. Uh, and in fact, I have patches for it, which I'll show later. But. Um, but when I went to try on the neck just to see what I thought, because um, I was trying to decide should I do white up here or black, so I put it on to think it through. And when I put it on, I noticed I'd only done one row of the ribbing, and I loved it so much that I just decided it has to be this. It has to be this. I, I felt like I just tumbled into my favorite neckline, which is, I put a short row in, so you can see up here it's a little higher at the neck, and it's kind of high here, but it's higher in the back, so it's one row of ribbing, one set of short rows, and then all the setup rows and binding off, but I set it up just like the turtleneck, uh, but the whole thing is narrower, and, and when you add sleeves to a weekender, it creates a lot of width right here. As soon as you put on the sleeves, you lose all this kind of narrow. And the birdie's so stretchy and flexible though that this is a great piece. You can wear shirts underneath it. And of course, it looks great with plaids and whatnot. And I think it'll look good with letters so later on. I think the Weekender experiment is just to say that knitting is not a race. It is not... Uh, something where uh, there's lots of pressure to knit the next and the next and the next thing. But I also want to offer a counter pressure or a counter, not pressure, but counterpoint to just say, to keep examining your own makes and your own wardrobe and thinking about if there's a garment that you love, why do you love it? If there's a, a problem with it, what's the problem with it? And then move your knitting, keep moving your knitting, directing it toward creating pieces that are easy to wear in your so, wardrobe. Thank you for turning in to the three-day weekender cal. Remember, you can follow us on Caddy Jack's Knits. We have a highlighter page there with details about the cal. We're going to be drawing finished object um, prize winners uh, Labor Day weekend over at the Lamb and Kid and we do have a three-day weekender hashtag on Instagram that you can follow to see everyone's mods along the way 
while this is my seventh, it's not my last. I completely love this now as just a basic piece in my wardrobe that I can use sort of as a canvas to, to draw colors with, with yarns. So it's been really fun. And, and the only way I think I get there is by slowing down enough to make and observe, make and observe, and just repeat that process. And inviting you to enjoy that, to understand Gage, to understand that you can rip things out, that you can use your own wardrobe for measurements, for silhouettes, for ideas, and of course, all the fibers. Take a take a sweater you love and just re reinterpret it in a new fiber. Okay, have fun. We've so enjoyed, and we look forward to enjoying more weekenders with you this fall. Okay, bye.